Hi, and welcome to the Changes Demonstration, brought to you by U.S. Us. Now, today we're going to talk about physical changes and chemical changes. A physical change is something that doesn't change the compound. This is things like tearing and breaking and changing the state of matters of something. Then there's chemical changes. This changes the compound, changing how it's made and is demonstrated by burning and rusting. And now, here's Haley showing us states. Thanks, Hunter. I'm talking about states of matter, which is a physical change. It's a physical change because the atomic makeup of the compound doesn't change, but the space between the atoms do. An example of this we have over here is boiling dihydrogen oxide. As you can see, there's a vapor coming up off the liquid, which is the same atomically as the liquid making it a physical change because the gas particles are farther apart but they're the same particles as the ones in the liquid. Another example of changing of matter is the freezing of dihydrogen oxide. As you can see, we put a glass of water in the freezer and now we're taking it out and it's in solid form now. It's exactly the same atomically but it's different between because the particles are closer together. I have these visual representations to show the space between the particles when you go from state to state. Here it is in solid form. As you can see, the particles are very close together, they're very compact, and they can't move very much. In liquid form, they're a little bit more spread out, but they're still pretty compact and they run into each other. And then in gas form, they're very spread out and they like just to take up as much space as possible. And that's why the changing of states is a physical change. Now to Darcy to talk about mixing. Thanks, Haley. Okay, there are two different types of mixtures. There's heterogeneous and homogeneous. Homogeneous would be like this water and this salt being mixed together. Take some salt. Mix it in there. Nice and good. Spilled over a little bit, that's okay. And once it's all mixed in, which it is, it's all good becomes a solution that is very hard to separate. You have to separate it with states of matter. Or an alloy, that's two metals that are mixed together through heat. So you have to separate them through a state of physical change. A heterogeneous would be like this Chex mix. It's evenly mixed, but yet you can still physically change, um, separate them. That's heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. Now to Zach for another physical change. Thanks, Darcy. I'm going to be talking about separating things, physical changes. An example of this would be breaking this apple. Make sure you're wearing your safety goggles and closed-toed shoes because this is dangerous. Ready? See, there's more pieces now but the actual chemical composition is still the same. This is a physical change because as the bubble pops in this water balloon, everything is released. Nothing is chemically changed, and then when I do this, it breaks, and the water is spread everywhere, and so is the plastic. Another type of separation is the balloon. Now, the plastic contains air. So when we pop it, the air is released and the plastic is broken. But because none, neither of it was chemically combined, it is, just changes its appearance and the amount of pieces are off. Our last example is tearing paper. Now, the only difference is the amount of pieces it is. The actual substance is still the same. Simple physical change. Now to hunt for some interesting chemical reactions. A basic chemical reaction is that with vinegar and baking soda. When the two are combined, gas is produced. It's a separation between the liquid and the gas. With this, with this reaction, there were two different parts, and when they are mixed, it produces a completely separate one, which makes it a chemical reaction as the two cannot be put back together. 
Combustion is another chemical reaction. The act of lighting a match, or lighting a candle, are both chemical reactions. The compound that was at the end of the match was sulfur and phosphorus, but when friction is applied, it turns into a flame and emits a gas. The phosphorus and the sulfur can no longer come back. The wood of the match is also broken up, producing the black that you see. And then, of the candle, the wick is burning up and is producing another gas. None of these can be recombined, and so it's a chemical reaction. Now to Eddie with fermenting. Spoiling of milk is a chemical change that results from the fermentation of lactic acid. This is a chemical change because the lactose in the milk changes to lactic acid through fermentation, and this cannot be naturally undone. So to summarize, there's both physical and chemical changes. The physical, not changing uh, the compound, but the chemical, changing it. The physical is going to be like the states of matter and tearing and breaking things apart and mixtures where they're not forming a new compound and can be taken apart no matter how difficult. And then chemical, burning and fermenting. Now it's quiz time. Tell me, physical or chemical? Tearing a piece of paper. Yeah, that's physical. How about burning a match? It's chemical, breaking an egg. It's physical. Here's a curveball, a rusting nail. That's right, it's chemical.